Good morning, I am outside Edinburgh University on a nice fresh morning. And I'm lucky enough that I've just managed to buy this VW ID4, one of the first in the country. Um, the thing is, I live right on the south coast of England. So we're gonna take this car, and I haven't even driven it yet, from Edinburgh down to London and beyond in a day. I wanna be home for dinner tonight. So what's it going to be like for comfort, range, charging speed, efficiency, and we came in our Model 3 long range, so we can compare them side by side. We've just pulled away from Edinburgh. It's 10 past 10 in the morning. This is my first time driving an ID4. I've driven an ID3 briefly, um, but obviously I've got quite a lot to get used to. But this is uh, nearly 500 miles I'm going to do in this car today. And uh, so it's going to be a really good chance to obviously get used to it, get a feel for it, really be able to give a pretty good opinion on it afterwards, I hope. Uh, I think one of the key aspects here is what's it going to be like to charge? How efficient is it? How fast can it charge? So we drove up to Edinburgh yesterday evening in our Model 3 long range, which of course makes it very easy for such a journey. In fact, we had less than an hour's worth of charging time to cover this journey going the other way. I'm going a slightly different route on the way back. I don't like to go back the same way, so I'm going down the east side of the country, down towards London. And then when we get to London, I'm actually going to go around the 25 and further on to where I live in Bournemouth on the south coast. So let's get on with the journey and we'll keep some updates going as we go. Okay so we've covered a few miles coming out of Edinburgh now and we're on the A1 which takes us straight down to London. I haven't particularly planned the charging route or anything. I want to sort of do it a bit more ad hoc, a bit more real world to see how, how we go with this car. Um, but I noticed just putting my route in um, to go home, which is down to London and then beyond, it's trying to prompt me to stop at a 50 kilowatt charger, which I think is rubbish. We need to really try to do a long leg and then have the fastest charge possible. So there's an Ionity charger near Leeds. Trouble is, uh, that is 195 miles away. I've got 201 miles of range here. Now this was fully charged when I collected it this morning. It had been on charge and had finished charging about three and a half hours before um, we picked it up. And it hadn't had any other preheating. It's been on charge and then finished charging at 100%. So this would have been on 100% or very close to if it dropped a little bit. The Model 3 was on uh, 90% and um, it was still charging. So I hadn't, we hadn't preheated it here, but it was still charging. And we put it on charge when we arrived uh, late last night, early this morning, and it was still going. So we'll see uh, how they compare, but he's he's showing more range even on, on that lower percentage, because obviously the Model 3, they've got quite similar sized batteries. Um, this has got a bit more usable, but will be less efficient. So it would be quite an interesting power set. I guess they're both family cars, slightly different, you know, so it's kind of SUV size, but they're pretty good direct competitors. But anyway, uh, I need to get used to all of these controls. Um, fairly intuitive so far, but I'll get used to these on the journeys today, of course. Let's see if we can make it to these Ionity chargers so that we've both really run these cars quite a long way in the batteries, get a good idea of what the possible range is, and then compare the charging speeds. So I'm going to crack on, see how we go. I'm just ringing Gibbs. Gibbs? Yes. Hi. Did you see my overtake of the truck there? I oh, did. I think you struggled a bit there, didn't you? <laughs> I had my foot to the floor and I was left in a slightly awkward situation when the other truck started coming head on. Um, yeah, I was flat out. The, this is in eco mode and on eco mode it doesn't really do overtaking. Um, obviously, so that's something like Tesla's chill mode. Yeah, Tesla's chill mode, it would even overtake that, this overtaking in eco mode. Um, and obviously I've been driving at e-tron recently, at least there you can reach down and hit the like a sport mode very quickly and, yeah. and pick it up. In this you have to press mode on the dashboard and then select a different setting on the screen. So yeah, have a go driving this in a bit, and, but make sure if you're going to overtake anything that you take it out of eco mode. Anyway, let's get to these chargers. So um, I'm showing a range uh, of 177 miles and it's 170 miles to these chargers. So I'm starting to cut it a little bit fine. Um, I expect you've got loads in the Tesla. What have you got? Well, I've got 208 miles left of range, uh, but it still says I'm going to have only 4% left when we're going to get there. And that's, that 
bets in a case if you're going to go below 70. Okay, okay. Well, these are 60 miles per hour A roads, so I think we stand a fairly good chance of being quite efficient. Look at the views. We've got views out to the North Sea oh, yeah, the yeah. other side of the camera at the moment. You won't see this, but this is quite nice. Um, I haven't been down this road for ages, but this A1M, yep, we're just going to follow it. Try and get it to these Ionity chargers. It's going to be a bit tight. Now, the Tesla, Gintz, when you left, you had, what, 90% was it? 90%, yeah. Yeah, I thought That's 90. something, 90 something, yeah. And this was fully charged. So, um, obviously, you got a disadvantage in terms of charge level. You got the slightly smaller battery, but you got the more efficient car. So, either way, we're both looking quite tight to make it to these Ionity chargers. But let's push on and try. So, we made it to the first stop. Of course, we did. Uh, I'm used to electric cars enough now to know you can control the range by adjusting your speed if you have to. But that was 60 to 70 miles an hour non-stop from Edinburgh and we're now just outside Leeds at a new service station on the M1 motorway. What data have we got? What's the range? Well, I've just arrived here with 1%, so I'm quite satisfied we've pushed this car as far as it can go, really. I've got three miles remaining and it's showing 1%. So at the start, when it was fully charged, it showed that we had 229 miles, I think it said, and now we have covered 217 miles so 217 miles from fully charged down to one percent so about 220 miles of range 60 to 70 miles per hour constantly 11 and a half degrees celsius which i think is about 55 fahrenheit roughly speaking so that's what the id4 can do on its distance now we're going to charge the uh, car up at these ionity 350 kilowatt charge and test the speed but firstly, uh, Gintz, who's behind the camera, what was your percentage at the start and now? <laughs> Let's go and have a look. <laughs> so by direct comparison, we drove in convoy at the same speeds the whole time, one behind the other, even took it in turns for slipstreaming and that kind of thing. The Model 3 long range on 18 inch aeros. This is the pre-refresh car, by the way, so no heat pump. This left at 90% and has arrived here with 6%, having covered also 218 miles. So actually recorded 0.3 of a mile more, and it's used 58 kilowatt hours of energy, 264 watt hours per mile, and the ID4 used, or is averaging 2 point, I think it came down to 2.7, it's about 2.7, 2.8 miles per kilowatt hour. So we'll work all that out, but I was gonna total up the efficiency at the end of the full journey. Let's now test the charging speeds, starting these at the same time. Okay, so the ID4 has been charging for 16 minutes now uh, from 1% battery after a long, consistent drive, so as warm as it can be. It was at 127 kilowatts for some time, but by 40%, it was down to 118 kilowatts, and it's now slowing 43% to 107 kilowatts. So we'll see how it goes. With the Model 3, um, we had trouble with one stand, so we actually moved it over here and it's now happily charging. Um, so this was started slightly behind the ID4. This car uh, was actually preheated, so before the Tesla fanboys start lynching me again, we actually set this as a destination for a supercharger a couple of miles up the road. So it had the opportunity to preheat, but it actually didn't preheat. And we found that with this car last night when we were driving up, and the battery was very low, we were arriving at a supercharger of say 2%. It also didn't preheat on, pre on, pre on that occasion. So maybe if the battery is very low, it just doesn't do that. It doesn't seem to make too much difference anyway, if I'm honest, so we'll see how we go. Anyway, this is plugged in. This is now on 19%, but it's only pulling 114 kilowatt. Now, these are 350 kilowatt chargers. This is a car that's been driven for the last three hours. It's at a low state of charge. I'd love to see this charging faster, but we're also at circa 100, well, no, 114 kilowatts still. So, um, yeah, and it didn't go any more than that again. So did you see it when it was lower? I think it didn't went to 124 or something. It just didn't go any higher than that. So I'd love to see this go up to its 250 kilowatt allegedly charging speed. But in all the Model 3s I've had and been driving for the last two years, I've never seen it. Um, I, the most I've ever seen is about 180, 190 kilowatts fairly briefly and then it comes down again. So they do charge fast. We'll see where we get to with these cars in another 10 minutes or so. 
and hopefully we can get to 80%. We want to go home, we've had a long two days and we've still got some way to go yet. 30 minutes have passed and the ID4 is now up to 68%, just ticked on to 69%. And it has added 56 kilowatt hours according to this and is currently charging at 66 kilowatts. So it has been just gradually slowing down on its charge speed. It's not doing too bad, to be honest. So to directly compare, 30 minutes in on the Tesla Model 3, and it's at 74% and has added 55 kilowatt hours, which is exactly the same that the ID4 added. So they're pretty comparable, really. Back to 80%, how long did it take? Well, 39 minutes and it's added 65 kilowatt hours and it's still charging 66 kilowatts. So not too shabby, I guess, you know, this would be where we're at the services, you stop and you'd have your coffee and a toilet break and something to eat. So back to 80%, 40 minutes, quite happy with that, to be fair. The Model 3 is just hit 80% and that took 34 minutes and has added 59 kilowatt hours. So remember the ID4 was at a lower state of charge when it got here, 1%, this had a little bit more than that. So. It's, um, it's pretty similar in timing really to get to that state of charge. So we're going to actually wrap up from here fairly soon and start heading our way back home now. And just the last one for the record then, 90%. I'm going to unplug and go now. That's taken 49 minutes and has added 73 kilowatt hours. So considering we had 1% and we've added to 89%, that'd make usable battery capacity in theory over 80 kilowatt hours. Um, whereas VW say it's 77, but anyway. I don't think it's too bad, 49 minutes, back up to 90%, let's go. Sorry, one last clip here. Um, let's look at how long it's taken to recuperate what's been used. That's another way to measure this, really. So the Tesla's now back up to 90, uh, well, no, 91% in 46 minutes. So at 90%, it was 45 minutes. And that's what the vehicle left with from Edinburgh. So it's taken 45 minutes to recuperate what it used on that journey. The ID4, however, was pretty much at 100%, and obviously that last bit of charging is quite slow. So on that car, because it charged, started charging earlier, it is now at 58 minutes, and it's about 96%. So you're looking at about an hour if you're going to recuperate in one go, and it's very different to just doing it in segments compared to 45 minutes. So the Tesla wins that. We did expect it, but it's not too far behind, to be honest. So uh, we're quite pleased with that. Anyway, that will be it for now. We're going to go home. Sorry, let me just pause there. On reflection, have you noticed something? So initially I was a bit dismissive, but VW say that the usable capacity is around 77 kilowatt hours. By my pro rata calculations, it's a bit over 80. I thought, great, no good, no problem, that's good. But the Model 3 added more kilowatt hours according to the Ionity charger than the car displayed, which was the Ionity charger said 68 kilowatt hours added and the Tesla Model 3 said 63 kilowatt hours added. Hmm, so it's starting to be a pattern here. Now, just to add to this, I've noticed on my Audi e-tron charging at Ionity recently, that again, the number of kilowatt hours added according to the Ionity charger would add up to more than is widely considered usable on the e-tron as well. So this is interesting. I'm not necessarily trying to create a scandal here, but I would like to hear from anyone who might have an explanation from that, maybe a comment from Ionity themselves. And if you've noticed similar discrepancies, I'd be interested to hear. So we'll keep an eye on this. Maybe there's another video in this, but let's carry on. Okay, so by the time we faffed around after filming and then had a quick toilet break before we do the last run home, um, this actually reached 100% charge. Now that took 65 minutes, 100% and it completed, finished and stopped. And it added 81 kilowatt hours, which is interesting because according to VW, it has 77 kilowatt hours usable. So let's make this final run home the next part there's Gint so he's at 96 odd percent now and the very last part you probably see him there the very last part is quite slow on the tester so he's just unplugging now and going as well let's see how far it is to get home from here should we call it a race sounds like it's a reasonable excuse for a race isn't it let's have a look how far it is so we've got I think my see the nav on this car still crashed it still thinks i'm in scotland there's going to be a way to reset that but i've got a total of four hours driving still 259 miles so 
this could be interesting. This is where the tester could pull its trump card, especially here. He might just about make that in one go. That's probably right at the limit, but he might just about do it. Whereas I will need to stop and charge. So this is where he might win this one. We'll see. We're just going to get on with this journey now because it's getting later and later and later. I'll speak to you soon. I'm going to edit this clip in here. Now, the original clip here, the quality uh, was just too bad. The sound didn't work at all. So pretend I'm driving down the M1 motorway just south of Leeds, like this, okay? And we've decided to have a race. So let's call this part two of this video is a race from the north of England to back to uh, our base on the south coast in Bournemouth, 260 plus miles of journey. A race between the Tesla Model 3 and the VW ID4. Surely the Tesla would trump this. Well, this would be interesting because the Tesla can do this in one run if he drives cautiously, possibly 65-ish miles an hour, maybe can up to 70, but I think at 70 he probably just won't quite get the full range. I know in this ID4 I have to charge anyway. But as it charges reasonably quickly, not as quick as some cars, but it's pretty good. Um, I'm going to have to stop anyway. So if I can keep that stop to maybe 15 minutes, I basically have to open up a 15 minute gap. If he's driving slower, that's possible. And then rejoin and see where we pick up from there. We may be miles apart, might not be interesting, but it's a good challenge, isn't it? The main challenge with this actually is, can we drive from Leeds back to Bournemouth without a toilet break. Well, I've got a charging opportunity, but Gintz has got to do it in one go. We'll be fair though, if he does have to stop and we'll time that stop and then I'll stop and pause for the same time just to make it even. But we'll see how he goes. Okay, so I'm making my second stop now and I shouldn't need to be here for too long, but basically on that section of the journey, I just drove absolutely normal, no sort of trying to be economical at all, outside line of the motorway as much as the law allows. And it's a pretty clear run, um, average just under 70 miles an hour, I think it's 66 miles per hour is the average, and that includes a few roundabouts. You can see I was at 70, which is the least efficient a electric car gets. Um, the other camera's battery's died, by the way, so I'm having to do this on my phone, so I hope the sound's okay. I hope the image is okay. It's starting to get dark. But, anyway. Um, the economy on that is still 2.6 miles per kilowatt hour, which means earlier I put 81 kilowatt hours into this car from 1% to 100%, so that still means a range of over 200 miles. So I think you're going to have trouble getting this car to go under 200 miles, barring just lots of short journeys where it's constantly having to heat the cabin. Um, motorways are less efficient usually than town driving it's all down to speed lots of stop start of course is a bit a little bit uneconomical but anyway i'm quite impressed with this economy even given very normal driving conditions now gintz is not stopping so the only thing with that is he's having to drive a little bit more carefully he was i spoke to him on the phone he's doing sort of 65 70 at times but he's just bordering that kind of uh, available range to get all the way back in one go uh, but he'll do it but he might just need to slow down to sort of 65 sometimes to do that so I'm ahead at the moment um, I think by about well I was ahead by about 20 minutes in the end um, however I did have a bit of a delay at this charger this BP pulse charger I got here and the contactless payment didn't work so I tried to activate it via the app I didn't remember my password offhand so I had to make a quick phone call to BP and they've got it going but it did delay me by a few minutes so listen learn make sure you know your login passwords on the app so that you can activate the charger via the app not necessarily just with contactless payment lesson learned there but um, cost me a few minutes to see how we go I think I need to be here for about another 10 minutes so it's going to be quite even I think when I pull away where we're going to be at so race is on this makes it a little bit more interesting at the end of a long day doesn't it so let's see how we go my other camera's died so i'm having to resort to my phone here sorry about the quality but this is a really good race you could have scripted it better it's better than any top gear race i think i've most have seen so um gins has just passed me i charged up to 39 percent which should give me just enough to get back to base in one go um he's just come past me but he's still going to be a little bit restricted on how fast he can drive. I can do 70, I think, now to get back. I think he may need to keep down to more like 65 to make it in one go. So 
we'll see how we go. There's literally a few hundred yards between us at the moment. We're just south of Oxford. There's about 80 miles to get home now. So the race really is on. This is quite good fun. At least it livens up the end of a long day. And there he is. There he is in front of me. There he is. <laughs> I'll pull up with him. So now we've just got to see who will actually get back. If you don't finish, you can't win, can you? But that in front is a Tesla. I haven't seen him since Leeds. We're now only about 50 miles from uh, being back and we've uh, converged in the same place purely by luck, really, a chance that we, could, we did not plan this, couldn't have planned it if we tried, I don't think. So now let's see who actually gets back <laughs> ahead. We do have to balance out our speed now, so we're both going to be probably balancing between 65 and 70 miles per hour. Uh, but I'm really determined to beat him in SVW, I have to say. <laughs> I feel quite confident I can hold 70, he's having to just hold back a little bit. So, I think this, you'll find, is a VW ID4 going past a Tesla. <laughs> bye bye, Gaines! <laughs> We'll see, if I keep up 70, maybe I have to reduce, maybe he can increase speed. So it might not be over yet, we do have to get back to the finish. But this is funny, so I come past Gins, and he is now slipstreaming me. I'm quite happy at 70 miles an hour, I think I'm good for range, just about. Um, he was going slower, but he's slipstreaming me, trying to gain some aero advantage so that he can keep up with me. I think he wants to make it like a sort of NASCAR Daytona 500 style finish, where you pulls out in the final straight so um yeah this is quite funny you couldn't script it better it's great stuff and this is it here we are at the Wilkins Bournemouth sign and there is Gintz right next to me we're gonna have to call it a draw we've both got a couple of percent but um no, that was good fun interesting uh, we'll do a quick roundup but I hope everyone's enjoyed the video I think we've gathered loads of information I've been impressed with this car and equally impressed with that Tesla as well. How good is it that we can do this with electric cars so easily now? So I think it's fantastic. We'll do a little roundup probably tomorrow. So there we are, the ID4 back from Edinburgh really quite easily. Um, I think what that proved was that we put it against one of the, probably the toughest rivals of Model 3 long range, known for being so simple and easy to travel long distances. And no doubt the Tesla is more efficient. No doubt it can charge faster. And no doubt if you're doing lots of long journeys, that is an exceptionally capable car. So hats off to the Model 3 long range. The fact that it can do Edinburgh to the south coast with just one single charge is fantastic. But if you're doing Edinburgh to London, the ID4 can also just do one charge. And then even down here, just that 10 minute top up, certainly had it back, no problems at all. I think to do that, obviously we did push the limits and we're relying on kind of really my experience of driving electric cars to kind of ignore what the car navigation's recommend for, when recommended for charging, sorry, and overrule that with, I think, the better option to get the most from it. But it goes to show that it has a sensible range, sensible charging speeds, and it is just a really good package. I think it's great value for money. £40,000 in the UK for a big family car like this. I think I do not see any reason why you'd want to choose a petrol or diesel XC60 or a VW Tiguan cars over this. It's a very capable car. We're going to film a full review next to this car, all the things I like, a bit more information about its size and space and performance. But as a direct comparison to one of the leading electric cars, the Model 3 Long Range, I think it held its own very well. So, next video out, full ID review, including all the things I don't like. There's a couple of those as well. So, stay tuned. See you soon.